Good afternoon. My name is Brian Grimkowski. I'm one of the assistant directors of graduate admissions here at William Patterson University. I want to thank you for joining us today for our webinar about our biotechnology program, our MS. Uh, and I'm joined by Michael Peake, who is the director of the program. And he's going to be speaking at length in just a couple of minutes about our program, about our facilities, um, and provide the opportunity to get hopefully all of your questions answered. It's our hope that this format is a convenient and easy way for you to get a lot of information in a relatively short amount of time and then go back uh, to whatever, whether it's family obligations, work, etc., the many things that keep us busy these days. Um, and just wanted to also let you know a little bit about the format um, before I turn it over to Michael. Um, we are going to go through, he's going to do the presentation. If you do have any questions at any point, I would encourage you to type them into the chat box there on the GoToWebinar app. Um, that will allow us, if it's something quick and easy that we can answer for you, uh, to type an answer to you. Um, if it's something that we think would be a benefit to everyone to hear, we can do a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Um, and we'll stick around afterwards if you do think of anything else that uh, you were hoping to have answered. Um, but certainly we hope that Michael answers absolutely everything you could think of. Um, also want to make sure you know that while this type of a format is excellent, as I mentioned before, um, it's no substitute, if possible, uh, to come to campus. I know we have a number who are in attendance who are joining us um, from other countries throughout the world. I know we have at least one or two attendees uh, from other states outside of New Jersey. So certainly if it's feasible for you, we'd love to have you come and join us for our next open house, which is going to be on August 17th, which is a Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. That would give you the opportunity to sit down, um, meet with faculty, talk about your interest in the program a little bit further, and maybe discuss an application if you are interested um, in getting started as soon as our fall semester. Um, so with that in mind, um, also know that we are going to be recording this presentation in its entirety. And the reason I say that is, again, because I know everyone has busy schedules. You may need to duck out early. You may miss a few slides for one reason or another. And take comfort knowing that you can remain uh, pen and paper free uh, while you are taking this in. No need to jot down notes. Uh, there's always the opportunity to refer back to any of this uh, further down the line. You usually get an email from us uh, within about a week letting you know that the webinar is up on our YouTube YouTube channel and then you can refer back and, and take any of this information um, that you might need further down the line. So that's pretty much it for the housekeeping end of things. As I mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box uh, as we go through the presentation. And that's certainly more than enough from me. Uh, I know you're here because you want to hear more from Michael Peake and learn more about a program. So Michael, take it away. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. And now also thanks to um, the Graduate Admissions Office for putting this uh, webinar together. So we, this is the actually the third webinar that we've done. Um, if you're interested in checking out those other webinars that we've done, um, they're also available on that uh, YouTube channel. Um, but thank you all for uh, coming and uh, taking the time to listen to our programs. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk or I'm going to talk mainly about the biotechnology program that we are uh, revising or we have revised and it will be implemented in the fall of 2017. Uh, so this first slide that you're looking at is uh, a picture of uh, our science complex. Uh, science complex now is a few years old, <clears throat> uh, but it is uh, relatively new. A lot of state-of-the-art equipment that I'll refer to uh, in a little bit. Um, I have a, an approximately 20-minute uh, webinar uh, scheduled where um, I'll tell you primarily about the biotechnology uh, program. But we're, we're situated in uh, northern New Jersey in uh, Wayne, uh, sort of a suburban community, and people are often uh, surprised at how picturesque our uh, campus is. Um, so like Brian said, if, if you have the chance to come uh, and visit, um, we'd love to have you and, and see how nice our campus is. Um, we have the best of both worlds. We have New York City uh, right close by. Uh, and then we also have lots of um, um, rural, um, outdoorsy things to do uh, as well. So let me begin uh, by giving you just a little bit of an overview <clears throat> of what we'll talk about. Um, I'll briefly introduce uh, both programs that we have, uh, but more specifically uh, talk about the biotechnology curriculum that we uh, have recently revised. Um, then I'll tell you a little bit about some of the research and facilities that we have and then uh, end with uh, some admission uh, requirements. So again, I just want to remind you that um, if you have any questions, you can type those in and we can try to uh, answer those as best we can uh, at the end of our uh, webinar. So um, <clears throat> also, I want you to note that at the bottom of the screen, you see the link uh, to our biology department webpage. 
Um, our web pages are uh, going to be revised um, in the near future, and so what you'll see um, is the graduate programs for um, the biology uh, program as well as uh, the old biotechnology program. So what you see here uh, will be the new and improved version. So uh, with that, let's um, look at our program. So we have, in the biology department, we have um, two programs. Uh, both of them are 30 credit uh, programs. <clears throat> they uh, both have thesis and non-thesis options. Um, the requirements differ uh, slightly between the two. Uh, the biology program is a, is a more general basic uh, biology master's degree, whereas the biotechnology uh, is a little bit more applied. And I'll spend uh, the majority of the time uh, talking about that. Um, I'll, I'll mention a little bit about the uh, thesis option uh, a bit later. Um, a non-thesis option is strictly a coursework um, a master's degree. Uh, and I'll explain what all those uh, courses are in our revised uh, biotechnology program. So um, we decided recently um, to revise our biotechnology program. Um, it uh, was a 36 credit master's to a, to a 30 credit master's to be more in line with um, the majority of master's degrees that you find uh, at these moderate sized uh, research institutions like William Patterson. Um, and our revision also came from um, <clears throat> New Jersey, northern New Jersey particularly, being a hub of biotechnology with uh, lots of pharmaceutical industries, lots of research uh, institutions that uh, are involved in biotechnology. Um, so in order to sort of drive uh, their needs, uh, we reached out to um, places like Merck and Johnson & Johnson to figure out uh, what kind of uh, master's students they would be looking to hire um, once they received the degree in biotechnology from uh, William Patterson. Um, so we asked them questions like what, what uh, coursework um, they would like to see, what skills uh, they would like to see the students have, um, and a general framework for uh, the kind of skills that um, they would like to see master students graduate with and, and they would try to uh, employ. Um, we also conducted an alumni survey of people that uh, have recently graduated from our programs and tried to get a sense for um, what kind of courses that we thought we should have and other skills that um, we could potentially provide in our curriculum. So that kind of uh, uh, guided how we revised our biotechnology program and um, Basically, we came down to these um, five um, <clears throat> key areas that we would like to emphasize and develop in our curriculum. So the first one is, a, a, is having a diverse uh, skill set. Um, most of the biotech firms um, <clears throat> said that they could train you in a lot of the biotechnology um, uh, areas uh, as far as wet, wet lab science uh, techniques and pipetting and uh, extracting DNA and running gels and things. Um, and they emphasize that a diverse skill set beyond those core techniques, so being able to communicate effectively, uh, oral communication, writing, verbal communication uh, is also uh, important. So um, <clears throat> we're trying to, uh, in some of these courses, um, have presentations and uh, external internships to try to uh, expand the diverse skill set um, and I'll, I'll refer to a communications course uh, a little bit later that you can uh, apply for, take uh, to try to enhance those uh, skills. Uh, they also emphasized analytical ability, so the ability to uh, solve problems, um, particularly um, multiple problems at the same time. So a person with a master's degree um, is a slightly higher level than if you only have a bachelor's degree and are a bench scientist. So you might be in charge of uh, several projects at once, um, all working on the same theme, uh, but having different aspects and being able to problem solve and, and uh, analyze uh, certain situations is a, a key asset that um, a lot of these biotech firms are looking for. Uh, they're also looking for uh, the ability to have some mathematical, probabilistic, uh, and statistical skills. Um, and so you'll see in our curriculum how we revised um, that aspect as well. So uh, being able to 
uh, analyze data, uh, and uh, draw some uh, conclusions about those data for the, that analytical ability. Um, the applied research aspect, um, we've incorporated, uh, as you'll see, uh, externships or internship capability so that you can uh, work on a real world, world problem, um, presumably with uh, one of these local uh, biotech firms that we have uh, in our area. <clears throat> um, the diverse skill set and analytical ability go in concert with teamwork and communication. Um, so being able to work in groups, being able to manage um, a project that has several aspects, um, that was a key feature in uh, a lot of what these uh, biotech firms are looking for. And then uh, last but not least is business knowledge. And, and you might think, well, why is that? Um, because it doesn't have much to do with biotech firms. Well, uh, North Jersey saw the exodus of a lot of research and development in the major biotech firms like Bayer and Merck and Johnson and Johnson. So we don't, they don't do much uh, wet lab science here anymore. That's um, um, uh, outsourced overseas. Uh, it's also outsourced here to northern New Jersey. So we have a lot of smaller biotech firms uh, that work uh, contract work on the bigger firms. And so these, um, these firms um, are small um, and being able to understand the business side of a small business uh, was important for uh, some of these um, uh, questions that we were asking, asking the local area biotech firms. So you'll see that also uh, reflected in our curriculum. So uh, with that, let's um, discuss the nuts and bolts of the curriculum, which are next right here. So um, we have a series of four core courses. So that's anywhere from 12 to 13 credits. So the uh, first um, three courses that you see are sort of uh, classroom uh, courses. Uh, the first two being um, the uh, reflecting sort of content knowledge in basic molecular biology that uh, any uh, person with a biotechnology degree uh, should have. So that's a three credit lecture only course. Um, and it serves basically as the basis um, foundational uh, theory behind uh, molecular biology that will help you understand a lot of the elective courses and, and things uh, as you proceed into your uh, curriculum. Uh, the next course, uh, Research Methods, is designed to give you a little bit more analytical ability, um, experimental design, how to set up experiments, and then take and collect data and analyze those data. So I'm actually involved in Research Methods. I teach the statistics part of it. Um, and so we use, um, or I introduce you to a couple of uh, the most powerful and widely used statistical programs uh, that are out there. Uh, that most research and um, pharmaceutical and industry folks use. Um, the next course, Project Management, <coughs> uh, is uh, slated to be an online course. Um, and that is where we would have a uh, person from industry uh, teach the course in how to um, manage various projects from start to finish, say it be drug development, say it be uh, a part of uh, cancer research, um, but just to give you an idea of how uh, a manager would <clears throat> start a project, oversee a project, uh, give you problems, uh, hiccups during the way, um, and see a uh, sort of a case study basis of how a project starts and um, goes to uh, finish or production. And then the last um, series of courses, those 7,000 level courses, um, is a is sort of a capstone experience. So uh, we require that you do something independent. Um, so that independent experience can be on campus or it can be off campus in one of these biotech firms. Um, but basically, you're either um, shadowing or doing some sort of research project uh, that would culminate in a research review or a research paper. Uh, it could be your own um, uh, research uh, that you would uh, write up into a uh, into a paper as well as present to um, to an audience. Um, so that's the core and it consists of those uh, 12 to 13 credits. And then we have um, 12 credits worth of electives that you can uh, choose from. So you see those three 5,000 level courses and then two 6,000 level courses in DNA, cell culture, um, genomics, 
gene expression and protein biochemistry. So you can choose three of those. Those are all four credit lab courses. Uh, so you'll spend uh, three hours a week in the lab uh, learning techniques on DNA extraction, uh, DNA purification, um, running uh, RT-PCR, quantitative PCR, things like that in that DNA course. Cell culture is both plant and animal cell culture. Um, so you'll uh, become experienced in uh, both of those techniques. Genomics and bioinformatics um, is a, an area that's certainly expanding now with the uh, uh, onset of our computer programming techniques and computer power. Uh, so that one is not a wet lab per se, but is certainly uh, gaining um, uh, popularity in trying to um, tailor medicine to uh, individualized uh, medicine um, aspects. Uh, gene expression and protein biochemistry are those 6,000 level courses uh, and those go back to the basic wet lab science giving you uh, techniques in the core biotechnology um, areas. Um, so uh, this has changed a little bit so our core uh, has changed um, being able to choose uh, from a series of electives uh, has changed from uh, what the cur curriculum has once been. Um, and then probably the most significant change that we see um, is the ability to, for you to take uh, up to two courses uh, outside of biology. And so what you'll see here are uh, management courses um, or marketing courses or masters in business administration courses and even uh, communication courses. So up to two courses um, you could take uh, in those areas and those would be designed to again go back to the idea that you have some sort of business knowledge or teamwork and communication skills and um, we've spoken with our business college as well as our communications departments uh, for you to be able to take those uh, master's level courses with, with minimal prerequisite requirements. Um, so um, if any of those appeal to you uh, we can certainly uh, <clears throat> expand on some of those courses um, and what they entail. But they're designed, again, to give you uh, a little bit more experience in what these biotech firms told us that they were interested in uh, master's students uh, coming out of uh, college, uh, having and being able to w work well uh, in that uh, biotechnology uh, area. So. Um, <clears throat> In addition to uh, taking those courses, we also have our elective courses um, in the biology department. So if you didn't want to take the communications or business route, you can choose from a variety of um, other electives. Uh, and again, I've been talking mainly about the coursework masters. So the coursework masters is um, all coursework, whereas a thesis masters, uh, which we also have in the biotechnology program, uh, is a research-oriented uh, master's where you would develop your own research project under a primary mentor that's overseen by uh, a committee of two other members. And basically, um, it's two semesters of thesis credits uh, where you're actively pursuing uh, your research question. Um, and, and the thesis is, is kind of designed for people that uh, want to uh, stay in a research environment uh, maybe at a research institution like Rutgers or or Columbia or something like that, uh, where, or uh, pursue a uh, PhD in um, biotechnology or, or related area. Um, so it's designed, again, to, to give you uh, independent research experience in the hopes that um, at the culmination you would uh, publish your results in, in a primary uh, literature journal. So um, that's basically the, the uh, curriculum, the revised curriculum of our biotechnology program. <clears throat> um, now I just want to briefly um, let you know up, about who we have in our department and the areas of our expertise that we have. Um, and hopefully you'll see that uh, we have quite a diverse um, group of faculty members uh, interested in a lot of different things. Um, you may not see ecology and evolution being related very much to biotechnology. Uh, however, the first um, um, professor here, Kendall Martin, is a microbial ecologist, and so uh, he uses molecular techniques 
um, to explore ecological issues. And so uh, molecular ecology is certainly an expanding field, as well as agroecology using molecular techniques uh, to, to, to answer a lot of the uh, crop issues and pest issues that we have. And so you may not think of biotechnology as being uh, related to that. Mainly people think of biotechnology as health related, uh, solving um, drug issues and things like that. But um, uh, hopefully you, you can also expand and, and think of other um, aspects of biotechnology that, that um, go outside of sort of the animal model and the human uh, condition. So uh, the next couple folks, Emily Monroe, she's our genomics professor. Uh, so she teaches that genomics and bioinformatics and she works on uh, marine organisms, dinoflagellates, uh, producing um, toxins, these um, outbreaks of, of uh, toxins that uh, cause fish kills and, and um, can harm um, uh, fishing and, and, and people. And so uh, she uses molecular and genomics approach to study that. Um, the next two people, me, myself, um, and Dr. Risley, were more uh, ecologically oriented and, and don't uh, use molecular techniques, but we do collaborate with other members of the faculty. Member, faculty. So, uh, for example, I collaborate with uh, Dr. Slaymaker, the next uh, person down on the list, and we, we look at uh, molecular plant ecology, uh, particularly on coastal dunes. And so we have uh, research that looks at um, <clears throat> how different genotypes on our coastal dunes um, influence the coastal ecology. Um, the next two professors are more evolutionary biologists, uh, Dr. Spagna and Dr. Vale. Um, and so not necessarily biotech per se, but um, evolution and uh, Lyme disease is certainly uh, something that could be explored with uh, biotechnology or, or um, those molecular approaches. We also have a core group of faculty members that are interested in physiology and behavior. And again, you can sort of scan the list uh, and see how some of these uh, might, apply, might apply to uh, biotechnology, for example. Um, uh, one that pops out to me is uh, Dr. Anivy using molecular biology of drug abuse. So he uses uh, animal models, uh, rodent models, both uh, rats and mice in our mouse facility. Uh, where he's developed a knockout for cannabinoid um, uh, receptors in the brain. And so he uh, studies how <coughs> uh, drug abuse and uh, various things affect the behavior and the physiology uh, in that mouse model. Um, a lot of the uh, faculty members that you see on this list um, uh, can span other disciplines like ecology and behavior. Um, <coughs> and uh, we're also a very collegial department that likes uh, collaboration. So uh, Dr. Bierbauer and Dr. Lee both study pain aspects in mouse models. And so um, those two uh, you'll often see in the mouse lab together collaborating on a project. Uh, and then our last area of emphasis uh, or expertise is in molecular biology and biotechnology. And so you see the list of faculty members here. And uh, our most recent hire, James Arnon, uh, is involved in yeast aging. Uh, so he uses the fungus in order to uh, study senescence uh, and looks at uh, various genes that are involved in um, signaling um, that those cells to die. Um, you've seen some pictures of uh, some of the students doing uh, research in our facilities. Um, and we have um, uh, quite a diverse set of uh, facilities in our, in our department and in our two buildings. Um, we have all the capabilities of um, extracting and purifying DNA, running gels, doing uh, quantitative and real-time PCR. Um, we also have the ability to run gels for protein analysis, northerns and westerns and all that stuff. Uh, we also have a uh, microscopy suite um, <clears throat> where we have both SEM, scanning electron microscopy, microscopes as well as transmission uh, electron microscopes as well as a confocal microscope. Um, so um, <clears throat> the only thing that basically we don't have uh, for um, biotech is a uh, gene sequencer. Um, and so um, basically the philosophy of the molecular biology folks is that it's so cheap now to take 
and send your samples away to be sequenced. Um, that we actually don't have that uh, capability. Um, <clears throat> but we certainly cover that in a lot of our coursework, how it's done and the, and the, and the theory behind it. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of our faculty members, some of our facilities. Um, the next thing I want to do is sort of tell you uh, where some of our graduates have gone. Um, so you see some of the big um, biotech firms like Merck and Siemens uh, on this list. Uh, these are all places where we have graduated master students and uh, where they have attained jobs. Um, there are other places that are not in the sort of big um, biotech industry like Regeneron. Uh, that's a smaller firm that, again, like I said, would uh, contract out from these bigger um, biotech firms uh, to do pieces of uh, projects. But we have a fairly successful uh, track record of, of placing uh, master students in uh, a lot of these uh, area uh, firms. Um, but if that's not sort of something that you're looking for, we also um, have students go teach high school. Um, we have students go pre, uh, pursue PhDs. We also have students go uh, and and um, pursue sort of health-related fields, um, <clears throat> um, doctors and uh, dentists and thing, things like that. And so see, these are some of the places that our um, recent graduates uh, have gone. So um, I'm almost uh, finished here with the, with the webinar. Um, I have a few more slides to go. Um, hopefully you've been thinking of some questions if I haven't covered anything. Um, the web page certainly at the bottom. Um, the, all the links in there are good places to go for uh, some answers. Um, but in case you're interested in uh, understanding some of the admissions requirements that we have, um, we basically require a degree in biology or a related field. Um, if you don't have a degree in biology, what we're going to look for is a core set of courses, um, and that's where you see that 20 credits of biology. Um, particularly for the biotechnology uh, program, uh, we're interested in your performance in genetics. And so I know in the, in the states, uh, genetics courses can vary quite a bit. I know when I took genetics, it was more Hardy-Weinberg and Punnett squares, whereas uh, biotechnology has more, moved more towards the molecular aspects, so a good foundation in molecular genetics uh, is crucial. And so hopefully that will um, <clears throat> sort of translate into you also taking organic chemistry and biochemistry, would also, which would also be important for the biotechnology program. Um, we're also looking for good foundations in math, uh, particularly calculus and statistics. Um, as you saw in that research methods course, uh, you will take a research or a statistics course. Um, so it would be good to have uh, at least a, a basic background in uh, basic statistics as well as uh, the foundations in physics and chemistry. Uh, we're looking for uh, undergraduate GPAs of a 3.0 and uh, we also require the GRE. However, for exceptional uh, well-qualified applicants, we can uh, waive that GRE requirement. Uh, we also require two letters of recommendation. Um, and it's nice if both of those uh, sort of relate to your academic potential and performance, uh, but it's certainly not uh, crucial. Uh, but we do ask at least one of those um, discusses uh, your academic potential. Uh, and I know we have some international applicants. So <clears throat> all those apply, uh, including the translated marks. So your GPA, uh, if you are an inter international student, must be translated, as well as some sort of uh, English proficiency exam. Uh, and again, you can find more information about that on the admissions uh, web pages. Um, and last but not least, we have uh, a few areas of financial support. Um, graduate assistantships. So those graduate assistantships are uh, full tuition, a small stipend uh, in exchange for working 20 hours per week. Um, for a faculty member or as a thesis student uh, doing your own research. Um, at this stage in the game, those graduate assistantships have already, already been allocated for the fall, but um, if any of you are juniors now and thinking about next fall, uh, or if you're listening to this um, at some later date, maybe this winter or something, 
uh, the assistantship application is um, due April 1st. And so we try to um, make those decisions rather quickly to try to uh, attract um, uh, really good candidates to our master's program. Uh, we also have a uh, interesting or a, a unique uh, position to offer uh, master's students pursuing uh, their degree to uh, teach undergraduate laboratories. So basically you would act as an undergraduate um, or excuse me, a graduate uh, adjunct uh, where you would teach maybe one to two labs um, per week uh, in uh, any number of either non-majors course or introductory general biology uh, courses. Um, so that's also attractive. Uh, you, you get paid and it's a nice sort of uh, line on your resume that um, has uh, teaching experience. So with that, um, I will leave you with my virtual business card. So um, that's me. Um, I coordinate both programs, again, the biology program and the biotechnology program. Uh, you'll see my email address down there as well as my telephone number. Uh, so please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Brian and uh, all the folks here at the admissions department uh, for uh, putting all this together and I thank all the attendees for uh, taking the time out of their afternoon or evening or morning uh, to listen. Um, and so now I guess I'll turn it over to Brian. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, it looks, at least as of right now, um, like we don't have we don't have any questions that have come through. But just wanted to touch on a couple quick things, uh, and, and certainly one of the things that you referenced uh, directly. Wanted everyone to know if you do have an interest in a graduate assistantship, if that's something that you're hopeful for, looking a little bit further ahead uh, for your graduate education. Um, when you complete our application online, which is on the William Patterson website, uh, the graduate admissions section of the page, uh, there. There's a box there to check off indicating that you have interest in being considered for the graduate assistantship. And there are a number of positions all over campus. Um, most of the academic departments have some positions available. I know we've had graduate assistantships here in the grad admissions office, undergraduate admissions, um, student services, athletics department, really all over campus. Um, and naturally, uh, you know, a big part of it is uh, having uh, tuition covered as a part uh, of your time serving as a grad assistantship. So certainly it's a, a wonderful opportunity for those that qualify. Um, so just if it is something that you're interested in, just keep in mind if you fill out the application online, you can simply check off that you want to be considered for that. Um, also, as uh, if any of you joined us a bit late, I wanted to make sure uh, you took away two things. Uh, first, we have been recording this presentation in its entirety, and we are going to be making it available on our YouTube channel. Um, probably uh, by the end of next week, you'll receive an email from our office with the direct link to the YouTube channel for this presentation. So if you joined us late, if you missed a couple slides, if there was some information that you want to catch back up on a review, uh, know that you are going to be receiving this. And then lastly, uh, if you missed, uh, we are going to be having our next open house on August 17th. So just wanted to make sure if you were able and interested in joining us that day, it's a Thursday. It's going to be from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, here on our main campus. So certainly we'd love to have you and you'll be getting an email about that as well. But I know the summers fill up quickly um, and, and certainly many of us have schedules planned the whole way through August. So just want to make sure you're able to keep that day uh, free if you do uh, have an interest in joining us. Um, lastly, uh, just want to make sure uh, you know as well um, that the first day of classes for the fall is on September 6th. Um, so there is still time to apply if you were considering starting as early as the fall, um, but uh, obviously it would be in your interest to apply uh, sooner rather than later so that there's adequate time to get all your documentation in uh, and for uh, Michael Peake to spend time to review your application and render an admissions decision. Um, we did have a question actually that uh, came through, so I'm just going to forward that along to you. Um, is the GRE required uh, for a WPU alumni who is applying to this program? Sorry, Michael, I think uh, you were muted. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, as if it, we generally uh, will waive the GRE requirement for our graduates uh, as long as they have uh, a GPA that's above a 3.0 and uh, a strong science GPA. So yes, we do waive the GRE requirement for uh, our undergraduates or our recent graduates. 
Um, I also want to mention that uh, if any of you have taken uh, any of the um, uh, other standardized tests like the MCATs or the DATs, uh, we can also substitute uh, those scores for uh, the GRE. So hopefully that um, can sort of broaden the scope a little bit. And then you may have touched upon this, but generally speaking, I know it can vary based on the, the course load that a student is taking in a given semester, but how long does it typically take a student full time to complete the program? Uh, our, our program is designed for two years. Um, I've seen students, students do it in a year and a half, um, but uh, on average, most students take um, anywhere from two to three courses a semester, and doing that, um, they can certainly finish in uh, two years. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Um, so again, I can't thank everyone enough uh, here from the Graduate Admissions Office for taking the time out of your schedule to join us. Um, I, I know for Michael, thank you so much for your presentation. That was very informative. Um, we're very happy to be able to uh, share this to any who might not have been able to join us, um, who registered. We know, again, everybody's busy and has family work obligations and everything in between. So uh, certainly we very much appreciate your time. Um, Michael, thank you again. And it's certainly our hope that everybody has a, a wonderful day. And if you have interest, we hope to see your application soon and hope to see you on campus uh, August 17th for our open house. Um, so thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.